In the past, I've shared multiple ways you can make color mixing charts in order to learn more about your paints. And while these methods are excellent for learning about color mixing, they can be rather intimidating for new painters and just tedious in general. I do highly recommend making these mixing charts, but if you've been putting it off for any reason, then I have a method that you may find much more approachable. It seems like the more I talk about color mixing and charts, the more requests I get for further explanation, and I realized I never actually shared one of my favorite types of charts. The chart you see here was made in less than 20 minutes and is incredibly enjoyable to make, that is, if you love exploring your colors. There's no grid to measure or taping required. It's simply an exercise in getting to know your colors and becomes an extremely useful reference later, which I'll explain. I even have a small one that I bring with me when I paint outside on the coast, because these are the seascape colors I can make with my limited palette. The benefit to this type of mixing chart is that instead of viewing a singular mix of two colors, you get to see a wide range of mixes between two colors. You also get to see how the mixes look as one color becomes more dominant. One could argue that this is far more useful as a reference for your painting sessions, and I admit that I favor these charts over all my other charts while I'm painting. I'll walk you through the simple steps to making these charts, and I encourage you to paint along. I'm using a sheet of A4 watercolor paper, which can comfortably fit 10 colors. To start off, choose one color that you want to explore. In my case, I'm using Quinacridone Magenta, as it's one of my new favorites. First, just write the name of your main color at the top of your paper. Divide the rest of your paper equally to fit however many colors you want to mix with your main color. Just for a reference, I simply made my lines one inch apart, and the column on the left is also one inch wide. Quick tip, write the names of your colors on the left side so you don't forget what you're mixing. Starting with your main color, we'll call it color A. Paint a single line of pure color, either on the far left or far right of your first row. Then touch the tip of your brush into your first secondary color. We'll call it color B. And you only wanna introduce the tiniest amount so that you barely notice a change in the color. Paint a line of this mix next to your first swatch and we'll continue this method throughout the row. You wanna make sure you're only changing the color ever so slightly as you go. At the center of the row, you should have around a 50-50 mix of the two. And of course, at the other end of the row, we wanna be 100% color B. Now, some of you might be watching this thinking, oh my gosh, it's so messy and uneven. <laughs> What about the perfect grids and the careful brush strokes? Well, I'm here to free you of your mental constraints. There will be a huge variation within each row. You might use a little too much of color A here or B there, or some of your swatches might be extra diluted and lighter in value. But this is exactly what we want. This variety is what we're looking for in every row. Yes, you may have one or two swatches that seem wrong, but in the bigger picture, we can see a steady progression from point A to B. As we go down the list, this method will become much more natural. You might even find yourself enjoying the freedom that this color chart gives you because it's not constrained by perfect brush strokes and perfect grids. When I do this, I'm constantly surprised and just so delighted by some of the variations I achieve. I find this chart especially good at identifying really interesting grays. If you have bigger paper or less colors to mix, you can make your swatches larger. The larger the swatches, the more variation you can see within each mix. But even with my itty bitty swatches, I gain so much insight. Even just realizing how powerful certain pigments are and how quickly they can dominate a mixture makes this chart an exercise in subtleties. So to reiterate, it shouldn't be perfect. It should be fluid and fun. And in the end, it's as much about honing your awareness of how to mix subtle shifts in color as it is about having a reference chart. And by making this chart, I realized quinacridone magenta truly is a powerhouse color and provides such vivid, clean mixes. If you want to share your own mixing charts with me or my community, head on over to my Discord server so all of us color nerds can drool over the swatches. But that's it for this mini tutorial. 
I hope you find joy in making these useful charts and I'll see you again soon.